All right, everyone, we are doing a recording for the use of our macro for our X-ray absorption spectroscopy data. Let's get right into it. I'm going to click on our Igor Pro, get that fired up. I'm also going to bring up a folder which has our BLI 511 analysis. I'm going to go ahead, click on that guy, open it up, and compile. I'm going to go into the macros, initiate, update, and then set BL82. You guys are familiar with that. Then we're going into load waves, going down to spec dat scan. We're going to go in and browse, find our data very quickly, make sure to stay nice and organized. It will make your life a lot easier. Put all of your Nexus data into a specific folder and work from there. So we've got research, Nexafs or XAS, and then down to raw data, and then to our folder. I'm picking 2016-03-24, spec underscore export, hit OK, and then let it load. You'll notice down in the left hand corner you see a lot of data being loaded. What's going to happen next, you go into our data browser, go to loaded, <clears throat> scroll down through all of these file folders, delete every single one of them. And that makes it easier so that you can see all of the uh, folders that are available to you. What we're going to start off with is EE. Remember, EE is our mono, TEY is the amount of electron counts coming into the detector. So now let's go over to set. We're going to get a new set. Now the first one that we're going to do is going to be carbon 1S. And when we do this, we're actually going to pick all of the EEs manually in uh, our data set for carbon, but we're going to do that in loaded. So let's go over to loaded, go over to EE, and you'll notice all those uh, data sets are in there. We're going to leave them in there because that's our root, and we can pick nitrogen, boron, whatever we want. But I'm going to go down to carbon where it starts. You'll notice that that's our X waves. I'm going to click all the way down until I finish off carbon. I'm going to hit OK that creates that new set. And you'll notice that the original waves, you just made an N0 wave. So if we clicked over here, you'd see N0. So that is our EE. So we can go ahead and just call it EE. And then hit enter. And so now we need to bring in the TEY. And this is where I was having some difficulty. So I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it TEY. I'm going to hit continue. Pick folder from which waves are duplicated. Now go to reference waves, hit continue, and when you're over here, come all the way back to your TEY and hit OK. You're going to hit the wildcard, hit continue. So now you have two folders in N0 and N1 little sanity check. Let's go over to N1. Great. It has our TEY data and we are set. We go up to N0. Okay, I'm going to minimize that. Okay, it doesn't like that. Anyway. We'll go over and then make our new folder where we're going to do our interpolation. Interpolate. Now this is where we are going to merge the X and the Y waves. Hit continue. Pick folder from which waves are duplicated or special task. At this stage it doesn't really matter. We're going to go N1TEY. We could do N0 also because we're going to end up manipulating this interpolation file anyway. So now we've got N2 interpolate and we're going to use the batch function and we're going to say interpolate on set. 
pick folder with Y data. That's our TEY. Hit continue. Now X waves are N naught, our EE data for the photon energy. We hit continue. Redimension and rescale waves? Yes. Use same scaling for all waves? Yes. We're going from 260 for carbon to 390. You can also check that is obviously different for nitrogen, boron, or oxygen. And we can look at the waves to do that later, but this is for carbon. We're going to hit continue. Smoothing factor we'll leave in there. We're going to do a linear interpolation, so that's one. Hit continue, and our work has been done. Now you'll notice we now have N2. N2 is our interpolated data set. Now what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to click on a couple of these and display them. So you can believe that I actually did the work with the correct X and Y waves. I'm going to go over to graph, I'm going to say packages, and I'm going to say make traces different. I'm going to go into the rainbow mode, and we're all rainbowed up. Everything looks pretty. Now we've got interpolated data. Let's do a linear background subtraction. Let's see if this works. It may not work, but let's see if we can do it. A couple of these guys already have relatively small backgrounds, but let's see if we can do some additional work. So in the set, we create our data folder, and then under our norms, that's all of the uh, work that we're doing. So we say new folder. I'm going to call this one linear BG 260 390. And I'm going to hit OK. Now the work is going to be done on our interpolated data. I hit continue. Now I go into batch function after I've created that guy and now do sublinear BG on set. The linear background is going to be from 260 to 390. We hit continue. Now if I go back, remember this is an N3, so you didn't see any changes right here. The changes are actually going to be in N3. And if I go ahead and click and drag across a couple of those guys that I recently did the work on, you'll notice that on, on this data set that we ended up having, some of them because of linear background effects, it got a little wonky, but on most of them, our background worked correctly and we're in uh, that area where we're supposed to have our linear background subtraction. The next thing that we'll do after that is some atomic normalization but I will leave that for later so that we don't have a long video. But from here, we are well on our way to doing batch displays of data and batch processing of our, uh, of our data sets. Now, if I wanted to do atomic normalization, the next thing that I would do is go norm, new folder, atomic, norm, hit continue. We're going to duplicate from our linear background because that's where we're doing our work and I'd hit OK. From there I can go ahead and go to our next batch function which is norm area on set in the range again. I did it incorrectly last time. It should be the small number to the high number. The normalization, I've seen anything from 1 to 1,000. Right now I'm just going to go ahead and pick 1,000. I go back to N4 where my data set is sitting. I'm going to go ahead, click on a couple of pieces of data, and display. It looks like that number must be uh, a little off. You'll notice that the numbers are extremely small, but that's okay, we can work with that. So that will cover loading the data, making the EE waves, the TEY waves, interpolation, and the linear background of subtraction. When everything is looking good, we should have a perfect linear background, and then this area right over here 
in the high energy regime should cross at a value of 1. So that's what I have for you right now, and um, please use that to uh, process your data. If you happen to be using our recent data from June or July, it's the same process, and we'll go with that. So I'm signing off. See ya.